Now, there's always been this strange fascination amongst metalheads as to what constitutes real metal or not. And I really should quote real because it's a good question, isn't it? What is real metal? What makes metal real? Now, if any of you are unfamiliar, I am, by all intents and purposes, a diehard metalhead. I do appreciate the finer uh, things in life, like, you know, uh, death metal, technical death metal, thrash metal, crossover, and, of course, you know, heavy metal, stoner metal, and doom, and drone metal, and, you know, honestly, just any, for, for pretty much any type of metal. And um, that being said, for me... It's always been a very interesting conversation whenever I come across a metalhead that doesn't really appreciate, um, well, like a, like a certain artist or a, a certain genre of metal. Like, for example, a lot of experimental metal uh, or people who are a little on the weirder side of metal, like uh, whenever Mike Patton did his little Phantom Side project, things like that. Um, so honestly, I've always found it interesting that amongst metalheads, this question is brought up because I feel that amongst these metalheads, they believe that their taste in metal is real as opposed to people who aren't. Now, I'd like to tackle this inquiry of sorts and to what real metal is and what I believe real metal is. Now, real metal isn't stylistic. Uh, you can't say that death metal is more real than thrash metal or vice versa. Everyone can have their own preference when it comes to what they feel is the appropriate form of metal music. We're all different, and there are many different types of metal to satisfy whatever needs you may have. But really, that isn't the point here. The point is, is you know, if it's authentic enough. Now, what is authentic metal? Authentic metal, I would say, isn't necessarily a genre or a band that fits within certain guidelines. For example, you can't say that Metallica is the real thrash metal band, or rather, that they're not a real thrash metal band because they abandoned thrash metal for, like, what, 15 years or so. You can't really say that. It's unfair to say. Uh, given that, well, you know, they were one of the founding members in the Bay Area thrash metal scene. They are uh, obviously one of the few bands on the planet that achieved superstardom when it comes to thrash metal bands. And they honestly, even if they did have their little escapade into bullshit for a few, almost two decades, that they, they were doing it because they were true to themselves and that they felt like they wanted to do it. I mean... Can you really say an album like Reload would have been commercially viable? I mean, listen to that piece of shit. They wanted to be artistically viable. They wanted to be Metallica. Cool. Whatever. But are they real metal? That's a good question. They're one of the few bands, uh, especially thrash metal bands, that have bounced between thrash metal and heavy metal, uh, or slower forms of metal. And it's interesting to note that although they did do this, I really feel like they stuck true to themselves, and even when they could have had millions and millions of dollars thrown at them to keep doing the Black Album, Black Album 2, or even keep doing Master of Puppets and Justice as the 90s went on, they chose not to. I mean, they eventually culminated into Saint Anger, for fuck's sake. Which, I mean, I, I personally like the album, but that's because I like albums where the artists challenge themselves. We're going to be a guitar-heavy band and make a guitar-heavy album, but have no guitar solos. You're talking about a top, you know, top... Uh, Billboard 200 to, uh, you know, yeah, a band that's doing this. And then you have, of course, other bands that are like Megadeth, where they didn't necessarily achieve that level of stardom out of the thrash metal scene. Are they more real because they didn't? Or rather, are they more real because they achieved a very good level of success while pretty much sticking true to those thrash metal roots pretty much for the entirety of their career? Or is real metal more um, a question of just commercial viability? If you are more famous more successful and make more money doing what you do, does it matter less? Now, I think this is a very good road to go down because it's a good question. Money corrupts and money makes things less authentic. It makes things cheap and disposable. So that being said, if a band becomes successful monetarily due to their metal music, does not mean the metal matters less? I don't think so. I think there is a very distinct line between doing it for money and doing it for you and making money while doing that. I think Metallica, Megadeth, uh, even uh, Anthrax and Slayer, these bands have made a good amount of money doing what they enjoy doing. That's fine. Opeth made money doing what they enjoy doing. That's fine. You have bands that, however, are like, you know, Attila, or um, even to an extent a band like Chimera, or even to an extent a band like Hatebreed, who I feel 
do these things because one, it sells, and two, they don't really have anything else to do. Not so much with Chimera and Hatebreed. I think I think that they're more uh, typecast, so to speak, into a certain genre of metal that they're comfortable with, and they don't want to experiment too heavily for the most part because you know it, it'll it'll take away from their fan base and what their fan base is looking for. And I think when you get around here, you kind of come full circle as to what real metal is. You're going to have two different types of people. People like me, who feel that real metal is something the artist is doing to stay true to themselves, even if it pisses their fan base off. Like, for an example, with Opeth's most recent Heritage album. It pissed their fan base off. No death metal vocals whatsoever. No blast beats, at least not typical death metal single-stroke blast beats that you would expect on a metal album. And, of course... You know, they actually used real recording. Uh, like, I'm a drummer, so for me, it's very important to have a very authentic sound for drums. And that album pulled it off. Whereas on their previous albums, they were very guilty of using triggers and pumping up the sound to make it sound grandiose, unnaturally. Then you're going to have a separate set of people who want these metal bands to conform to what their idea of metal is. So they want the band to do what the fan base wants. Now, bands uh, who subscribe to this are both for my Valentine. Although it's kind of a stretch calling them metal, in my opinion. Uh, you have bands like Attila who do this. You also have bands like Blood on the Dance Floor. Again, a stretch by calling it metal. Because I feel like, you know, side note here, that bands like Phantomas, or even to an extent Faith No More, are more metal than Blood on the Dance Floor. Despite the fact that they don't have... The, the, the typical mechanics of metal music. Uh, most of Fifth and More features a lot of rapping. As they go on, they get a lot softer and more melodic. And, of course, Phantomas doesn't even have normal vocals. It's all scatting. Uh, and then, of course, uh, their third album it is fe it features very, very heavily a bunch of cartoon sounds and is inspired by cartoon music. Admittedly, not very typically metal. It doesn't talk about death. It doesn't talk about dismemberment or destruction or very, very political points of view. It's a lot more artistic and ethereal and... As opposed to a band like Blood on the Dance Floor, where it's pumping arena rock that likes to shove its fucking fat metal dick inside your throat and make you feel good about it, in theory. I think that people who want these artists, rather require these artists to conform to how they want, again, to use Metallica, because Metallica is fairly well known, it's easier to use them as an example. When they went to their black metal, or their black album, not <laughs> black metal, when they went to their black album, totally uh, just changing the ethos as a band because uh, i mean you go from a band like or an album like justice and justice for all phenomenal album by far their best album it's definitely aged really well even if there isn't enough bass on it but when you go from there to sad but true uh to um uh, even you know to an extent even going to like the memory remains and like you know uh until it sleeps and all that shit when they move into that direction i think they're just as metal as uh, when they're thrash. And the reason why I think this is because they're challenging their fan base. I mean, they made so much money doing something that they wanted to do, so they wanted to keep doing what they wanted to do. Admittedly, in the late 90s, you know, they got a bit greedy, specifically with Lars, the whole Napster bullshit, but honestly, it's behind us. Who cares? I mean, there's even talks of the next Metallica album going to be released on the internet only. Lars was talking about that. If that really happens is one thing, but I mean, the fact that they're even entertaining that idea now it just goes to show how they've grown toward the internet these days. Uh, they're not even on a major label anymore. They're on their own flackened recordings label. So basically, uh, my, my point here to kind of um, calm down the talking is that real metal is essentially what you make it. But what isn't real metal is a fan base that requires their uh, source of music to conform specifically to what the fan base wants. I think it's important in music to be challenged. And I think, if anything else, it's important in music to ensure that, you know, if you're not going to be challenged, at the very least, stay true to who you are. You're not going to ever call Motorhead, the band, a, so, a sellout. They've been doing the same shit for fucking 40 years now. Literally, the same shit. But are you going to call them sellouts? No, because one, they've done, they did it when they didn't make money doing it. They did it when they did make money doing it. They do it with different members. And they do it because they like to do it. I mean, is it less real? Or is it more real because they show that consistency? Up for debate. But here's the thing. You have a lot of Motorhead fans that like it, stick with it, know every song, know every album, even if it is hard to differentiate between some songs and some albums. 
But that's just me, because I don't really like Motorhead that much. But there are a fuckload of bands who do, or, or yeah, then a fuckload of people who do, and they're fine with it. I really don't feel like their fan base requires Motorhead to sound like that. And when they have made certain artistic differences in the past, honestly, their fan base is pretty accepting of it. So, that's good. I really wish that metal as a whole would kind of move toward that. Because, I mean, you have people who like Trent Reznor, for example, with Nine Inch Nails. Not metal, but what I'm saying is, is that he can do whatever he wants, and his fan base loves it. Now, you have people like Lady Gaga, which admittedly her music is, you know, very similar. But for a pop musician, she does things that are pretty different compared to all other pop musicians. And let alone the shit she says, you know what I mean, like in support of gay rights. And she, she's very vocal. Um, she's very, uh, like... Uh, self-motivated and self-empowered woman and that's a good message to send but uh, here's the thing like if she were to make a heavy metal album her fan base would probably like it because it's lady gaga and that's kind of the level of respect that i think metal bands don't really get to have with a lot of the metalhead fan base this is changing the tides are turning you have bands who are like revocation for example that use a fucking banjo and and one of their more recent songs i believe it's called invidious it's a lead single or a single off of uh, their recent eponymous album and honestly it's good uh it's fucking brutal um and of course the riff follows the banjo rhythm which is just clever and honestly you have bands again like Opeth, who they're coming out with a new album soon it's going to feature longer songs that are still in the vein of their heritage vibe which is very minimally distorted guitars, um, no bullshit drum production, recording the drums and bass in one take, things like that. So these are things that are to be respected artistically. And I feel that a lot of metalheads don't approach, approach metal with an artistic mindset. A lot of them approach it with a visceral, animalistic mindset, which is cool because, I mean, whenever you're in the pit running around in a circle, badass. And so when, that, when, when, there, when there's a deviation from that, I think people can get nervous and afraid for the future. If there's positivity in the world, and if there's just a positive nature going toward metal, metal heads, and of course the musicians who make it, it's only going to lead to positive things. It's good to experiment. Metal in 50 years is not going to sound like metal today, and it's not going to sound like metal 30 years ago. Or it might, if there's like some sort of neo-movement of redoing the old shit. And if it does go that route, that's okay, because they, the artists want to do that. If you feel as a metalhead that metal music isn't sounding the way it should sound, or you feel like thrash metal or death metal or black metal or whatever form of metal you like doesn't sound the way it should, make your own black metal band. Make your own death metal band. Make your own fucking doom metal band and do it yourself. It's really the great thing about music, isn't it? If you don't like what you hear, make something you do like to hear. That's why I love the Melvins so much. <sighs> There's another band that you can get into that's fucking amazing. It's easy to mistake the Melvins as a side note as a metal band. Totally not a metal band, though. But anyways, that's um, that's that's my little spiel there on real metal. Uh, basically, it doesn't exist. And uh, if you think that you know what real metal is, you're kind of a dick. Um, I really feel that authentic metal is something that is important to talk about because if you're only listening to music and the musicians make that music because all they do is make money. It kind of takes away from the authenticity. Well, rather, it just takes away from the power of the entire experience. And, of course, authentic authenticity is important to a lot of metalheads for some reason. Uh, but it's really because a lot of metalheads are hipsters when you get down to it, unfortunately. But it, it is what it is. Uh, but that being said, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like, like. If you don't, dislike, please. And, of course, tell me why you don't like it or why you do in the comment section. That being said, my name is Axel. Peace.